year uh, in a row. This senior conference is really focused, as Patrick said, on the future and on the impact new technologies and innovation have on the sector. The ICT revolution has turned many industries on their head, and the energy sector is certainly not immune to this change either. The government wants to ensure New Zealand is well positioned to take advantage of all the opportunities these advances and the ones we don't even know about yet have to offer. I'm pleased to be able to, I hope, give you a good sense of the government's approach today. In discussing future directions for the electricity sector, you're aware of the IEA, isn't it, talking about an uh, energy trilemma. And I want to start with a focus on the customer, the people and businesses who use electricity. The three key things that all users want from their energy system are security, affordability, and sustainability. And New Zealand currently scores very well on all three. In terms of security, New Zealand has recently ranked third for energy security amongst the top 25 energy users in the world by the World Energy Council, well above the OECD average, which came in at 10th place. You might also be interested to know that New Zealand is also ranked 8th out of 125 countries for pursuing a balanced policy agenda, prizing energy security, equity, and sustainability. Thanks to significant recent investment in both transmission and new generation, our electricity system is now more secure, and New Zealand is better able to cope with the dry year. 2012 was one of the driest years on record, but this went largely unnoticed by consumers. Operators have been responding to the right market signals and conserved water during that winter. Since 2010, if a consumer conservation campaign is required, retailers have had to pay compensation to consumers. The carrot and stick approach is working very well. Affordability. Our competitive market for electricity generation delivers the lowest cost sources of energy for retailers to sell to consumers. The generators compete with each other to build the next best generation option. The forward hedge market sends longer term signals uh, to investors and what the market is prepared to pay going forward. Retail electricity prices are now increasingly much more uh, increasing much more slowly than they were a few years ago, and the outlook is stable. New Zealand's residential electricity prices currently sit around average when compared to other OECD countries. The retail market is more competitive now than it has ever been. This has led to electricity retailers jostling to retain customers and win new ones. They are doing this through sharp pricing and innovative service offerings. Customers are seeing a fundamental change in the offerings and discounts available to them, such as prompt payment discounts, lower fixed term prices, and acquisition and retention payments. <coughs> All this has been triggered by the 2010 market reform and by electricity authority initiatives to encourage customers to shop around for the best deal. I note with interest last week Mighty River Power announced that from next month, an extra discount of 2% on top of the standard 10% prompt payment discount will be available to all residential mercury energy customers who receive their bills by email and pay by direct debit. This will see 150,000 homes either automatically get this discount or only need to make one small change to get it. Initiatives such as Mighty River Power's are being driven by increased competition to attract and retain customers. From here on in, the answers to questions on pricing is, in my view, intensified competition and transparency, not a radical departure from this. That's what the government and the electricity authority is really focused on. A big part of that trilemma, sustainability, when National came into office in 2008, as a share of renewables, as a share of electricity generation was 65%. Today that number is 75%, which 
in the last quarter of last year, 84% and the lowest emissions from electricity in 17 years. This makes New Zealand the fourth highest in the OECD. We set a challenging but often achievable target of 90% of electricity generation from renewables to 2025. New generation capacity being built here is mainly using renewables, particularly geothermal and of course wind. This is happening based on competition between generators without the need for government subsidies or incentives. Increasingly on market principles, renewables are crowding out thermal generation in New Zealand. For example, you know this one, the 30 year old company power station has retired two of its 250 megawatt units over the past two years, which halved its coal burning generation capacity. In addition, gas plant is now increasingly used as firming plant, filling in the demand peaks of wind or hydro generation is reduced. Looking ahead, there's clearly exciting opportunities for the sector that will bring additional benefits to electricity users. There are opportunities for smaller scale generation, greater <coughs> renewables, better information, and more control for customers, driven by ICT and the use of internet and smart devices such as smartphones. The government's role, in my view, isn't so much to manage this innovation as to create an environment where innovation is facilitated and encouraged for the benefit of consumers. It's experts like you who are the best judges of risk and return as investors who stand to gain or lose most from the quality of their investment decisions. Customers will respond to technologies that deliver what they want, not what policymakers, politicians, environmental activists, or energy experts think they should want. This is why the government has worked with the Electricity Network Authority to set up a Smart Grid Forum, which had its first meeting earlier this month. This new forum will provide a platform for dialogue between senior representatives from all parts of the electricity system, including consumers, as well as business, scientific and academic interests. I'm confident the forum members will bring system-wide perspective to the opportunities and challenges that lie ahead for the electricity sector. The increased use of renewables, as well as greater use of dispersed, small-scale generation, will make different demands on the electricity system in the future. On the supply side, advances in technology are more likely to deliver faster identification of electric faults and more granular and timely information about the condition of power system assets. The upshot will be better service and lower cost for consumers. All parts of the system need to interact effectively for this to happen. Generators, distributors, and retailers. An example of how this might work in the future is Vector's pilot program for domestic solar PV in combination with batteries. Storage batteries enable some surface energy to be stored during the day when the house is empty and released as needed at night when the household is busy turning on lights, cooking the evening meal and using other electrical appliances. The end users can monitor what's happening on their smartphones using the internet and smart meter technology. The batteries are also connected to the grid so Vector has the ability to release energy from them to reduce peak demand and manage traffic on the distribution network. This could enable Victor to avoid unnecessary expenditure in network capacity. In the Victor pilot, all of these technologies are working together to deliver on what customers will most certainly want. Better service, more control, more reliability and cost savings for end users and for the network, as well as delivering on environmental objectives. I expect that a future scenario for electricity will be a smarter electricity system based on new technologies that empowers consumers by giving them more information and control over how they use energy and more choices. Our energy future is bright.
is uh, David Parker, who I think uh, probably would be right at this 